presenting three glorious sons. Beneath the frontispiece of William Shakespeare's first folio lie a tremendous number of puzzles. Today's puzzle comes from the third part of Henry VI, which begins on page 147 of the tragedy section. The puzzles in question are on page 152. And they are from Act 2, Scene 1. The right hand column. And these 20 lines. They begin with Edward saying, Dazzle mine eyes, or do I see three suns? To which Richard replies, Three glorious suns, each one a perfect sun, not separated with the racking clouds, but severed in a pale, clear, shining sky. See, see, they join, embrace, and seem to kiss, as if they vowed some league inviolable. Now are they but one lamp, one light, one sun, in this the heavens figure some event. Edward, tis wondrous strange, the like yet never heard of. I think it cites us, brother, to the field, that we, the sons of brave Plantagenet, each one already blazing by our meads, should notwithstanding join our lights together and overshine the earth as this the world. What e'er it bodes, henceforward I will bear upon my target three fair shining suns. Richard, nay, bear three daughters. By your leave I speak it. You love the breeder better than the male. Between the arrows is where our puzzle lies. The first line is where Edward says, do I see three sons? Followed by Richard's first line in this exchange where he says, three glorious sons. Edward continues with three fair signing, shining sons. And Richard ends with, nay, bear three daughters. Richard also recites one on his first line. One lamp, one light, and one sun, he continues, And Edward adds, one already blazing sun by our meads. These represent what I consider to be a number gram, in which we add up all of these numbers to find out a clue of the author of the plays. Three, plus four, Three plus one plus three plus three equals seventeen. Skeptics will start to scratch their heads and say, Well, gee, I can see something else in here. I can see. These uppercase I's can be seen as Roman numerals. So we could probably add those to our mix too and get 21 rather than 17. But the point is, these are Roman numerals, whereas these
are English words. Therefore, I believe that this is a real number gram and a clue in the authorship game. What's puzzling is what Richard says at the end of this exchange. Nay, bear three daughters. By your leave, I speak it. You love the breeder better than the male. He switches from sons to three daughters. And if this is in relation to Edward, then we have a further clue as to his identity. And notice too that Edward is spelled with an epsilon as the uppercase E. But just above when he begins this exchange, it's just an italic E. As you can see here. And here. Furthermore, in the middle of the exchange, he is noted as Edward. But he begins more colloquially as Ed, as if we are actually coming towards a profound truth. Well, I wanted to get some more information before I made this conclusion that this is really a clue in the authorship game. So, I looked at the left column and saw that Edward begins and enters this play with the Greek letter Epsilon. And after their exchange, Edward continues with an uppercase italic Roman E. So he switches from Greek to Roman to Greek to Roman to Roman again. Now that told me that perhaps the use of the epsilon was giving us clues as to the author's actual identity. So what we have here is Edward, the number 17, and three daughters. Who among the English literary renaissance fits all of these clues? There was one whose daughter became the first female lord of man. His middle daughter, for which there is no known portrait, was proposed once as a wife for William Herbert, who was one of the two dedicatees of the first folio. His youngest daughter, however, would marry Philip, Herbert, who was the first Earl of Montgomery and brother to William, and also the second dedicatee for the first folio. And of course, we are talking about Edward de Vere. The 17th Earl of Oxford. Now people will say, well, maybe this is all just coincidence. Maybe this is, doesn't mean anything. But of course, you know that the writer of the play would have been consciously doing this. And the compositors would have been consciously adding letters and numbers and so on on the page. So this was deliberate. There is also proof for skeptics.
Following page 152, there is naturally page 153. As you can see here, they are properly numbered consecutively. But if you treat these numbers as individual digits and add them up, you get the following. 1 plus 5 plus 2 plus 1 plus 5 plus 3 equals 17. Now this suggests very strongly that this passage, these 20 lines, are allusions to De Vere. So when I looked at this, I asked myself, are there any clues on the other page, the facing page? Because that would logically follow. So I looked at Edward's first speech on page 153. His name that valiant duke hath left with thee his dukedom and his chair with me is left. The gematria sum of all the uppercase letters in this section adds up to 27. Now, if we add <clears throat> the number of words which are on all lowercase letters, we have 13 of them. And we add the two together to get 40. The next speech I also looked at. O oh, Warwick, Warwick, that Plantagenet which held thee dearly as his soul's redemption is by the stern Lord Clifford done to death. The gematria sum of all these letters, the uppercase Roman letters, is 189. If we were to subtract the number of words in italics, of which there are two, we get 187, which is 17 times 11. If we subtract the number of words with Roman uppercase letters from that gematria sum, we get 179. So here we have one sum that has digits that add to 17. 1 plus 7 is 8, plus 9 is 17. And one sum is a multiple of 17, 187. Now if we add all of the gematria values, including the italic uppercase letters, and we subtract the number of words with uppercase letters, including those in italics, we get another digit sum number that adds to 17, 197. 1 plus 9 is 10, plus 7 is, of course, 17. There's another puzzle here. We count the Roman letters, in this speech and subtract the number of italic letters, the total sum of italic letters from this. And we get a mirror of our primary number. So all these four results share the number 17 in some way. And that's just from that one speech. Now we go to the second column. Where is the Duke of Norfolk, gentle work? And when came George from Burgundy to England? The gematria sum of those uppercase letters is 105. Now, if we subtract the gematria value from the 
were George. We get another digit, some number. Now we continue on with the last speech, full speech on this column. Lord Warwick, on thy shoulder I will lean, and when thou failst, as God forbid the hour, must Edward fall, which peril heaven forfend. The gematria sum of all the Roman uppercase letters, which are not in brackets, is 73. So, Find the Latin alphabet recount, repeated count value of this, and you will get another clue. Now, let's take that gematria sum again. And we subtract the gematria value of the uppercase E in Edward, 5. Or we can subtract the number of words in brackets as they are optional. Remember from the easy peasy way to tell secrets that anything in brackets can be optional and subtracted from another sum. So we're taking the gematria sum and subtracting the number of words in brackets from that to get another clue. So here are all the speeches, complete speeches by Edward, and their significant numbers. 40, 179, which is a digit sum number, 187, which is 17 times 11, another digit sum number of 197, another digit sum number of 98, because 9 plus 8, of course, is 17, and then in the very last speech, complete speech. We have a sum remainder of 68, which is 17 times 4. And the Latin alphabet repeated count value of 73 is 4D, which is a homonym, homophone rather, of the number 40. Now, if we add up gematria values of all the Roman uppercase letters in these complete speech, we get 394. If we subtract the number of words with Roman uppercase letters, which is 25, and then subtract the number of words with a Roman uppercase letter in brackets, The result should be a number whose digits add to 17. So, once again, how many times does the number 17 or 40 have to appear in these puzzles before we get the idea? That Edward de Vere, the 17th Earl of Oxford, wrote these plays. Thanks for watching. Stay safe.